Hi guys, welcome along to uh, the Need a Haircut, Need a Shave episode. I don't know what I'm thinking of, but I will get a haircut and a shave soon. Anyway, so I've got a few pickups to show you. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten altogether, covering uh, four different formats. A couple of retro ones, well, a few retro ones. When I say retro, I mean the earliest one go back, uh, goes back to 1995. And it's a PlayStation 1 game, and it's one which I absolutely loved. It's kind of a bit of a, I guess, like a sleeper hit, as they call it, or I feel it is. Uh, I don't think it got nowhere near as much attention as it should have got. And um, maybe a lot of you haven't even heard of it, and it's a great game. There it is. It's called Project Overkill. Um, in this little jewel case here, like the, uh, that they have in, a, in America. Now, I've got to be honest, I kind of... Initially, I didn't like the slim jewel, I, um, jewel cases. I think it's because I was so used to the big kind of thick uh, PAL ones and maybe nostalgically they meant a lot whereas these didn't but essentially it's kind of the same thing it's still like a black spine um, with like the white writing on but just a slim jewel case version so um, it's it's much more, it's easier to store them I guess you know rather than the big thick clunky uh, PAL cases and also it means, I mean nice little uh, Brucey bonus here with the uh, with the broken case, but still, you know, it's a jewel case, they're easily uh, replaced. But it, it's just so much easier, you get the little uh, booklet which is inside there, as opposed to that like, thin piece of paper on a PS1 game there. I, I, I kind of prefer these actually. So yeah, that's that one. It's kind of like a bit of a 3D kind of uh, isometric shooter, and I might have to do some kind of gameplay on this, because I, I feel this doesn't get anywhere near the attention it should have done. And it, it's just a laugh, like you shoot the bodies and they lie there and it's you just cause like complete mayhem and carnage. It's a great game. Really underrated. Okay, and now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven original Xbox games. So Xbox One. Um, now all these cost about, I don't know, a buck each, you know, so like a dollar, a dollar twenty or something. So maybe what's that? Seventy-five pence a quid each. Um, which I, I felt was an absolute bargain. So the first one, not played any of them yet, um, but I'm going to give them a try. Uh, first one, a Ninja Gaiden. Um, I haven't even checked to see if these are all boxed and complete. <laughs> Man alive, what a start. I swear this is just genuine reaction. I haven't got a CD yet. That is unbelievable. Oh my god. That's not good. That's unbelievable. <laughs> this should be an outtake. That was ridiculous. Alright, next one. I'm going to have to contact the guy about that. That's hilarious. Hitman Blood Money. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Unreal. Talk about epic fail. That one does have the CD and the um, and the game in. That is unbelievable. I can't believe that. Um, Far Cry Instincts. I'm really like nervously opening these boxes, thinking, is the friggin' thing in there? Um, I love this actually back in the day when it came out. A really good game. It's probably aged a lot now, but I'm um, looking forward to getting back into that. And uh, that's the third one. Fourth one, Call of Duty Finest Hour. Not played this one before. Uh, at least I don't think I have, although it kind of looks familiar on the back. But there's so many Call of Duty games out for like the original Xbox, the PS2, 360, PS3. It's hard to keep uh, tabs on what I have played, what I haven't. I, I think I have, I must have. Um, the Godfather. Never played this, I know that for a fact. Um, movies are great, so um, yeah, let's give that one a try. GoldenEye Rogue Agents. Now, this is going to be really interesting. A while ago, I wouldn't have been interested really in giving this a chance. Um, it just looks a little bit uh, rubbish. Or I would have thought it looked a bit rubbish. But with the new James Bond GoldenEye version coming out on the Wii, um, and I've watched a few James Bond movies lately, kind of got into it, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'll give this a try. And it looks all right. So I'm looking forward to giving that, uh, giving that a try. And last but not least, I hope this one's complete. Yeah, thank God it is, because this is the best one of the lot, in my opinion. Um, obviously I had it back in the day, loved it, it's a classic, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. So I get to get that for a dollar, I mean bargain, Billy bargain, so that's that. And then two games on the current gen formats, the first one uh, on the PS3, now this one um, actually usually goes for about kind of $20, even though it came out four years ago, I think it's 2006. Um, yeah, 2006, so nearly five years ago. Um, it's kind of hard to get hold of for a cheap price, despite, like I say, it being, it being four years old. Now, I think the sequel's coming out at the end of this month, which I'm going to get, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's either this month or next month. Um, but I wanted to get this anyway, and the cheapest I could get it for was $20, and I, I've spent months looking for this. Anyway, 
drum roll. So this is F1 Championship Edition on the PS3. It's a really good game, but already after playing it, I've discovered a lot of books. And really silly little things, like I just did a... It wasn't a Grand Prix, it was just like a quick race, a single race. And it was like, I think, seven laps. And it got to like the third lap, and the, the, uh, the what do you call it, the, the microphone people. The microphone people? What do you call it? The people who were talking to me through the headset in the game, like the team, the, uh, what is the bloody word? The engineers or whatever, you know what I mean. They're, uh, they were like, oh, you've got to come in soon for uh, pit stop, change your tyres or whatever. So I thought, okay, fair enough. But he didn't say I had to go in on that lap. So I went around another lap. And on the next lap, I think it was like the fifth lap, he said, right, you're going to have to come in on the next one. Right, so I went all the way around, went in on the next one, and just went straight through the pit stop, and it's automated, so you don't control it, you've just gone all the way through. And nobody came out. Nobody came out at all. So, uh, and then like, ten seconds onto the sixth lap, the car, the wheels like exploded, or something happened, and uh, I had to quit the race. But no one was there in the pits to fix the car, even though they told me I had to go in. That was ridiculous. Um, but the weather um, effects are really good, the rain looks fantastic. Um, and for a four-year-old game, it looks great. The sequel's going to be immense, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, speaking of immense, um, I've got a game for the 360. Now, this one has got the CD in the drive. So, yeah. Halo Reach. I mean, this is amazing. This is an amazing game. If you like Halo 3, then this is just... It's, it beats it hands down. It's got little new things implemented. You've got, like, a jetpack that you can use if you want. Uh, you can select it as, like, a perk, even though it's not technically a perk. Um, well, it kind of is, I, I guess. Um, you can use that. It, it's, uh, it's got like a sprint feature now, which is always one of the things which I thought held Halo back. Because you compare it up against Call of Duty, which, you know, you hold the analog stick in, you run. And this just felt too clunky and too slow. And now it's got the sprint feature in, it's fantastic. And the best feature for me, probably in any video game ever, I've yet personally to come across one which I prefer. It has um, the theatre mode. So after a game, you can go back and watch everything. That you watch it from everyone's perspective, and you can save clips, record clips. And if you're playing the game with like some mates, uh, then you, you can. It's, it's just a laugh. You can watch what they were doing and save their kills, or when you get them, tease them about it or what have you. Uh, theater mode is just the best thing I've ever seen in any game ever. It's amazing. Uh, anyone who's thinking about getting this game, you've got to get it. It's amazing. Is it better than Call of Duty? Well, it's a completely different game. You know, it, it's it's space. It's futuristic. It, it shouldn't be really judged and compared. It will be, but it shouldn't be judged and compared with Call of Duty. It's a complete separate entity. Um, all I know is you've got to get this if you've got a 360. Or it, for me, it's almost worth buying a 360 just for this. Uh, plus, there's a lot of other exclusives out anyway. Anyway, guys, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Take care. You've got to buy this. See you later. Adios. Next time, I'll have this cup and that shaved off. See you later. <laughs>